You're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack! The boys are going down, Danny. I can't stop it anymore. So here on the channel, we've been talking about digital comics and kind of the future of, of the comic book industry in general and, and how that's going to play a part in that. And whenever I have one of these, these conversations or I, I talk about the topic, I always get some very, very emotional people in the comments section saying they will never read digital comics. If something is released digital only, they would rather just quit reading comics altogether than, than do actually uh, – even consider moving over to digital. I personally, I, I don't quite get it, you know, where, where the hate for digital comics come from. So here I decided to bring somebody in that's been reading physical comics for a very long time, could probably provide some insight about the, the fierce opposition, almost violent opposition to digital comics being, you know, part of the future of, of the comic book industry. Obviously here with me is the man so cool. They call him the Breen, the comic book quarter himself. Eric Breen, how you doing? I'm doing well. Well, I'm glad you could come on here. Now, you're you, you know we're we're older gentlemen. We, we are part of the digital age, but it, it came in at, at the end of at, at the tail end of our life. You know, I didn't have a cell phone until I was like third. Isn't that crazy? I I was fifty. There you go. You you can understand where I'm coming from. So I can understand why why some people might not prefer digital to be the the medium that comic books are delivered in. And I agree with. You. I would prefer to read comic books. You know, in a physical form, I'd rather have the, the periodical or the, the trade to read. But me personally, I live in the Philippines. I am on a, a, an island that does not have a comic book shop. The closest comic book shop is a two-hour plane ride to Manila. Is it a plane ride or is it flight? It's, it's what it is. Maybe it's both. <laughs> I have to go to Manila via plane for about two hours just to go to a comic book shop. So I almost don't have a choice. I have to read a lot of my comics via, via digital, especially if I actually want to review them here on the channel because if i do order the comic books from manila they do arrive but it's a week later so i you know i'm pretty open to digital comics it's part of my daily reading life just as far as being a comic book reader eric what is, what is it with the rest with a lot of long-term hardcore comic book readers that just hate digital comics well it's it's not it's not hate so much as when you say long-time comic book readers those people also tend to be collectors and there's you don't collect digital no, you yeah you collect you know physical copies and that's i i think a, a main you know kind of opposition to digital i for myself i i've never i've never had to because i've had a a comic book shop within 10 miles of where i've lived you know for the entirety of the time i've been collecting oh actually i take that back comic book shops weren't really around when i started but about five years in, I found one. They're still there. So I've had access to the physical copies for the last you know, 40 years that I've been shopping there. Are you completely opposed to, to comic books? Does, does it? We know that you are a collector. I, I make fun and, and call you a hoarder. You're a comic book collector. You have a, a large collection. Would that, would that change the hobby for you if physical comics are no longer available? And, and digital was the only form. Would you no longer be as interested? I'm not sure. I I do have an example of that there was a company called Claypool Comics that did um, some books called Dead Beats and Soul Searchers, and they went out of business, print, and went to online. And I was a big big fan of Dead Beats, and I tried to read it online for a couple issues, and then just kind of decided it wasn't. You know, worth it but at that time i also had the dozens to hundreds of physical copies of comics coming out from everybody else now if digital became my only option i w i wouldn't be opposed to making the transition but it would be a question of is there enough that i care about still being published to go there so I think that's a, one, of the, one of the issues with digital. One of the big ones is actually the, the readers themselves. I don't think they, they're done very well. I don't know if you've used Comixology or, or the DC or the Marvel um, platforms as far as digital comics. I don't think they work very well. Besides that point, I do think just the way that they're delivered, the idea that you're going to pay a, a single issue price for a, a digital comic book is kind of silly. 
you know, you don't, uh, people don't view digital movies, you know, all that often, you know, for, for a single print, you know, you, you get the uh, Blu-ray and you get a digital file, but mostly you go to Netflix if you're watching digital movies, because you get an access to a, a large selection of, of digital movies from multiple title or multiple publishers or not publishers in this count, uh, this case would be studios that are producing all this entertainment, whether it be movies or TV shows. And I think that the comic book industry by having Comixology, which has a very limited selection from Marvel DC, a little bit more from other publishers, you can essentially get all of Valiant on there and, you know, picking and choosing a lot more indie stuff on Comixology. Then you have Marvel and then you have the Disney or the DC platform. They're not all kind of working together and then not having new comics available. All that, uh, you know, close to the publication date. I think it's going to be six months now. I think that is a hindrance in one of the reasons that digital comics haven't gotten bigger in the United States. I think if they had access to all the new stuff, you know, within 30 days of, of publication, and then you could get access to all the classics, people would be willing to throw down that $8 for a subscription. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not at all opposed to like the comicsology, the ones that have the libraries of the companies. I think my biggest, you know, opposition to digital is the, the same day or one week apart because you know I, I was in a business for years you know and, and yeah worked at a record store for decades and when digital for when when Napster came out and then you know recordable CDs went from being ten dollars a disc to three cents a disc and all you know one person would come in and buy a copy and then they just make copies for all their friends it hurt my business. It hurt their business. It eventually just decimated sales. There's no way to say that that hasn't had an effect on comic sales as well, because you, yeah, you there are people that will pay for the digital versions, but for every one person that's paying, there's how many people? What's the term that's popular now? Sailing the high seas for their copies, and. Eventually, like I said though, that book that was selling a hundred thousand copies, you know, might be cut in half or a percentage somewhere in between. And eventually that filters down to how much you can pay the creators that make the books that you like, because there's no longer that money there to pay those people's page rates. So eventually you're you're watering down the product and it hurts obviously the comic book shops. And it, and it kind of goes to what I've been saying for a while that the the industry at this point, there seems to be two kinds of people. There's there the people that collect comics and the people that just read because the, the people that read the newer stuff tend to not go back and read the older stuff in as high enough, in as high a volume as it used to be. You know, there, those of us that do both seem to be a dying breed. And digital serves the the temporary audience, and but I don't think it creates permanent ones. So... I know it's kind of a long-winded answer, but I, I, yeah, that's that's. If I have any opposition to digital, it's that. It's piracy. Well, it's it's piracy, and it's again, like I said, if you're just reading your books digitally, there's there's really no. I don't know. You you tend to not go get into the physical hobby, which is what keeps the LCS is going. So I, I, I yeah, try to think. Different Good. experience personally. Like I, you know, obviously I was in the Philippines, and there have been several comic books that um, that I've read digitally first, and then I enjoyed them so much I went out there and ordered a physical physical copy. And a lot of times, at great expense to myself, like the comic wasn't available here in the Philippines. I couldn't get the first trade of Exo Man of War. I had to actually go and order it from Texas. And, the, you know, the shipping costs a lot of money, but the, the comic book was so good and meant so much to me. It didn't matter to me that I had already read it. I wanted a physical copy to have a part of my library. So I do think uh, there are people, if, if you are a comic reader and, and you see something in in, in, um, in digital, there's a good chance that you will want it eventually in, in, um, in physical copies as well. But here's the thing that I think that the great potential for digital comics is... The amount of LCS and, and comic book shops available worldwide isn't all that many. It's actually quite limited when you think about just Western comic books. And, you know, here in the Manila, I think, or here in the Philippines, I think all the shops are in Manila. I think there's six of them. You know, Philippines isn't a small country. Obviously, that's more abundant in the United States, Canada, you know, around there. Uh, but 
there are a lot more people with tablets and access to applications via Google Play or iTunes or whatever to um, to go in and access these comic books and finally read these terrific stories and gain a new audience. I think it might be the new great gateway into comics if they could ever actually get their heads out of their butts, work together, and get the subscription model correct, maybe follow what they've done over at Mongo with Shonen Jump, and, and get them out there in an abundance and at a cost that you know is inviting to new to new readers. Yeah, I don't think there's a perfect answer. In a perfect world, you could get the books digitally the day they come out, pay for them, and then yeah, you know, like you said, there are people that you know, really like the stories and want the physical copies. Unfortunately, they're all there are also far more people that will do it the other way. And again, as I said before, it, it has a, a ripple effect and it ends up hurting everybody. There unfortunately is no perfect answer because anything that can, anything that you can put on digitally, I don't care how well you try to protect it. Somebody will find a way around it. And at, at that point, you know, it's, they can just put it out there for everybody. So, you know, as far as like what, what the perfect answer is, unfortunately, I don't have one and I'm, I don't think anybody else does either. No, but I mean, there, there are certain models out there, your Netflix model, like I said, you're shown and jump where the price points relatively slow. The, the selection is very high and, and there's always new, new content pumping in there to, to keep, keep readers, uh, you know, coming back for more. And that's where I, I think, um, you know, Western comic books have been lacking. Me personally, like, like I said, I think it might be the, be the great gateway, but you are correct. Piracy is always going to be a problem, but I, I think, you know, that Pandora's box has been open. Piracy is a problem for music. It's a problem for TV shows. It's a problem for movies. You know, it's a, it's a problem for everything. You know, when a movie comes out, you can, if a movie comes out in Japan a week before it does in the United States, you can watch it in the U.S. before it ever comes out in the theater, because there's going to be a, you know, there's going to be a ver version out there, bootleg copy with Japanese or American subtitles with, or Japanese subtitles that you can watch. You know. Yeah, and if you know, and if you are buying your comics digital, you know, you're not at the shop to be exposed to all the other, you know, potentially great things you can get into. And I know you can then you can make the counter argument that you can go on Comixology and flip through all the things they have. But what you know, what Comixology doesn't have is that guy behind the counter that may Absolutely. have read a ton of these things that can, you know, promote you know comics from you know the store. And like I said, it's it is the future. I mean, you you can't stop it at this point. The best you can do at this point is try to come up with some kind of system that benefits. You know the, the the retailers, whether it's you know a thirty day, you know it used to be like the movies would come to like Redbox thirty days before they would go to you know Direct TV Cinema, so that there would be that at least that time to make some money off of it. If maybe that, but then you know the, the, there's people that don't want to wait, and I'm you know I'm sure that the comic book companies themselves don't want to make their you know, they don't want to potentially alienate a percentage of their readers. So that's probably not going to happen. I'm, I think same day digital is here to stay. Well, it's not the same day digital. It's, it's six months. For, no, for and I'm, talking about, I'm talking about you know, new comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's six months. When a, a new comic is published by Marvel, it shows up on their Marvel Unlimited app six months later. Okay, but it, but can but you can also but you though, can buy it as a single purchase. I'm right, talking about as part of the subscription. No, that that's what I'm I'm talking about the mm -hmm. being able to purchase it same day. Yeah, and I know it, even at, you know at full price. But again, all it takes is that one person to buy it, and then you know send it out to everybody. And I'm yeah, I said it, it. Apparently, that's not too difficult to do. I said I myself, I've never read digital. I've never sailed those high seas, so maybe it's easy for me to sit here and be a curmudgeon about it. But yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't have the, I wish I had an answer that would be of benefit to both the retailer side, the fan side and the, you know, comic book companies themselves. I'm just not sure. I don't, here's, I also don't, I think there's this misconception. I think retailers are, are very nervous about digital comics that once digital is available and, and maybe if new comics are available for the, the subscription model the same day, 
as they came up in, in retail uh, retail shops, people will just stop going to, to comic book retailers. The the direct market will just go away. But I don't. I think there's a value add. I think they they will end up working together because more people will have access to it, and maybe they find out there is a comic shop down the street and they want to go see the wares. Maybe they they um, they they want to go and get some physical comics. So. I don't think that digital comics have to be the end of the industry, but I do think that is like the big worry and a lot of the opposition, the fierce opposition to digital comics and why I get so many very negative comments that if we go all digital, I'll never read a comic book again. It's like, it doesn't have to be that way. No, and I'm, again, I'm not going to go that far myself, but again, yeah, if I'm a retailer, I'm not anxious to embrace a, a form of technology that takes money out of my register. Yeah. You know, and you know, I, 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 I don't know if there's, yeah, you know, if, if you did it like, like a Spotify or something where, you know, Marvel and DC or the, the companies that do digital, you know, if there was some kind of thing that could trickle t- down to the shop owners, but by that time it would be so minuscule, it wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a interesting problem. I have heard, that one company, like the plan was, if you buy a digital comic, like you'll have, like your local comic shop will be identified, like when you buy it, and then like a physical copy will be waiting for you the next time you go visit. Now and then, the, does the company pay the the retailer for that copy? Is that how yes, that works? That's, that's the point. Is is that the retailer still makes money? Now that would that sounds. That that sounds interesting. That sounds like a good solution. I can't remember exactly which company was was doing that, but it's it's one of the smaller publishers, I believe. And that was kind of the idea of the workaround during the initial pandemic, but that that never actually came to fruition. But um, you yeah, know, that might happen in the future. But I don't know. It feels feels like digital. You know, it's gotta it's gotta be a part of the comic book somehow. And if you look at what they've done in in Japan, like I mentioned, the Shonen Jump app, I think it's two dollars a month. And you get unlimited access to, to their entire catalog. And if you go to Japan, and if you go to North America, and, and you go to Europe, you know what you'll see when you go into in bookstores? Tons of manga. It, it has not put uh, decreased the demand for that medium or those stories. It's actually increased it, it now, seems. I am very much a fan of the, the comicsology, like the DC apps, where you can go into the back catalog. Because let's be honest it's a lot of those books are priced out of most people's budgets if you go far enough back and it's it, and it might be the only way fans do have to go back and get those classic stories and then they might decide from there hey i, I want to seek out these physical copies if i have the ways and means to do it i think it's just it's the the new stuff you know finding a way to to make it you know more attractive to buy the the new comics from a, a you know in physical form from retailers because you know if if retailers go away i you know I, I think the industry goes away because if everything goes to digital that just becomes something else to fight for your digital time and and you know money and then you're you know you're going up against all the other things that actually that you can pay for that actually move like video games and movies and stuff like that. If so, if, if that was the only option for a lot of people, because a lot of us that are the collectors of the physical issues, you know, it might be easier to kind of like, you know, fade away. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't think it has to be a, a zero sum game for physical no, comics. It doesn't. To, for, for digital to, um, to be an important part of Western comic books. It's certainly driven sales of, of manga worldwide. It's, it's the, it's basically, was the reason for all the growth that it was experienced <clears throat> as far as comic books in, in 2020 in North America. And, you know, Shonen Jump app, I think, had a lot, lot to do with it. And uh, I, I think ID, or ID, IDW, I think Marvel, DC, uh, probably Amazon, obviously, they, they own Comixology, probably need to get together and work something out to the benefit of everybody. I, I don't think uh, embracing digital, bringing the cost down, adding, adding a, a value add to the subscription model will, will uh, end up killing off comic book shops. I think it will end up growing it if it's done correctly. Of course, uh, there's a lot of ways you can screw all this up. It's, it's new, uh, new territory for everybody. But I, I wish people wouldn't wouldn't be so 
vehemently opposed to digital comics. Uh, not everybody has access, access to a comic book shop. Hey, it costs a lot of money for me to get physical comics. I have to read digital. No, and and that's been that's been where that has worked uh, to in, increase readership. Because I said, if it gets if it gets the comics into the hands of people, yeah, there we go. But it does hands. it does screw over the collectors. If you went to digital only, I don't want only digital. I want both. But I, I think you you kind of have to work together, get the subscription services correct. And I, I think even if you got the cross low enough and you've got the 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 library big enough, I think even the hardest core physical comic reader would like that because guess what you can bring with you on your plane? Just in your tablet. You can bring 40 graphic novels. Oh, yeah. It's 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 very, it's a large uh, convenience factor. Certainly something I enjoy doing myself when I travel, have it there, read comics with my kids and stuff, and, and we have a good time. But I don't know, hopefully the, the mainstream comic book industry in, in North America can can start to embrace digital and kind of figure it out because they have not the slightest idea how to make it work yet. So I can see why people are are opposed to it in its current form because it definitely doesn't work. And uh, yeah, they have not figured it out. Breed, I do want to say thank you very much for coming on here and talking about digital comics, you know, and, and the opposition to it. You seem to be very worried about piracy. I don't think there's anything that you can do about piracy nowadays. The, that Pandora's box has been opened. I think you have to work within a in a um, a world where piracy is, is going to be a problem. No, it, and it, I think the best best solution to piracy is providing a good value to customers. Well, the, yeah, it, uh, to that point, one way to maybe get more people interested in going to buy the physical copies is give those customers stories that you want to have to keep. That's something that I, I, I just see a lot the last five or six years. It seems like more stories are just disposable and like I said, it, you know, it's a lot easier to, if you got a story free and it blows, you're not out anything. If you paid for it digitally and it blows, you're not out any physical space. And that's one thing that, you know, it's, you know, give the customers something they want to keep and hold on to, and then let everything else take care of themselves and work the bugs out. And then everybody wins. I agree. Well, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you next week about some more comic book stuff. Sounds good. Maybe we'll get spicy. <laughs>